Hi there everyone, we're gonna talk about word form in this video. What's that? Word form means the form of a word. So it's important to know the parts of speech first, but I'm really gonna focus on just four of those forms of a word or parts of speech. Nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. So to show you what I mean, let's talk about the word consider. Consider means to think about something. Consider is a verb, it's an action. You consider something that somebody tells you and you think about it and you consider it. That's a verb, it's an action. But we can turn that verb into a noun. There is a form of that word that's a noun as well. And that word is consideration, consideration. Consideration has the same root or beginning just like consider. It's just that the end changes a little because it's the noun form. And then we could go and we could look at the adjective form, considerable, considerable. We have the same beginning, the ending changes. And then finally we have considerably, and that's the adverb form. As you can see, it ends with the L-Y. So what I'm pointing out here is that you can learn one word and have many different forms, sometimes all four, the noun, the verb, the adjective, and the adverb, or sometimes only two or three or one of them. It just depends on the word. The important thing that I think people who are learning English need to know is how to know which one to use, okay? And so that means studying grammar, learning the rules, practicing the language, right? And knowing where a noun goes and knowing where a verb goes and that kind of thing. But also, even when you know that stuff, you might miss and put the word in the wrong place. So for example, sometimes students will write a sentence and they'll use a nice academic, great vocabulary word, but they'll use the wrong form, like in this sentence. He needs to consideration this idea more. So what's wrong with this? The problem is that we've used the word consideration, which is a noun. And instead, we need to use the base form of the verb, consider, because it's coming after to. It's coming here, needs to. You use the base form of a verb. So that's it. So how do we do that? How do we avoid making these errors? Let's talk about what we need to look for. So let me point out here again. Remember, this was a verb, noun, adjective, adverb. How do we know that? Well, you've got to look at the ending, the end of a word. In English, the form of the word comes in the end of it, for the most part, not always. Sometimes it comes in the beginning, but most of the time it comes at the end of a word, and those are called suffixes. And I'm only telling you that not because you need to know that, but because if you wanted to Google it, you could look up some more common suffixes, which I'm going to talk about here. But you can see, consider, okay, this is the, the, the actual base of the word. So in this case, it doesn't really seem like there is a, a suffix in this case. Um, it just has that word and it is the base of it. Consideration, ation, that is a very common suffix ending for a noun. A bull, consider a bull. A bull is a very common suffix ending for adjectives. And lee, okay, lee, after a bull too, okay? Lee, you add the lee to the end and it becomes an adverb. Not always, but a lot of the time, L-Y is for adverbs. So let's look at some of those other suffixes. So here's the list of some of the common word endings or suffixes for nouns. There's a lot more, but these are pretty common. So we have shun, okay? So for example, the word decoration. Itty, itty is a common ending. Complexity. Mint, measurement, ness, sadness, er or or, teacher, ants or ants, difference, importance. And then there's ing. The reason why I include ing here, even though it's usually used for a verb, is because we 
use ing to make nouns too when we're using gerunds, which are verbs that end in ing that act like nouns, like speaking, learning, studying, and they can be the subject of a sentence or the object within a sentence. So they're definitely nouns and they're really common. Now, the suffixes here that I've listed all kind of have different meanings too, but I'm not gonna go into that just because it's gonna make this video really long and it's something that I think is a great strategy to learn the meaning of a word is to study the meaning of the suffix and you can definitely go and do that but you could also just read and talk a lot and just recognize these. You don't have to study, you don't have to memorize this, just sort of recognize that these are the forms that we use for nouns. Now let's talk about verbs. Now again, this is not all of them, but these are some of the common verb word endings that you might see and need to use, and it will be helpful for you if you kind of get familiar with them so that you don't use the wrong ending when you're trying to use a verb. So the first one is if I, okay? So for example, classify. You need to classify the types of errors you make in your writing. Eyes, realize, eight, exaggerate, n, threaten, awaken. And just a note on these verbs, these are the base forms of the verbs. Once you turn the verb into the form you want it to be, it might end with an ing or it might end with an ed or an en, depending on what verb form you're using. But these, um, this list of suffixes is for just the base form of a verb before you change it. Now, let's talk about adjectives. Well, there's quite a list here, and this is definitely not all of them. These are really common ones, and I'll say again, if you can learn the meaning of these suffixes, it would help you to understand how and when to use them, and that is hard to do when you're learning a new language, but really it just takes kind of practicing the language, listening to it in authentic situations, but here I'm gonna give you a list of the most common endings for those. So, us, okay? Delicious, eight, fortunate, full, beautiful, less, careless, if, creative, int, confident, all, logical, ed, and ing. Now I'm adding these two because even though they look like a verb ending, they actually can be used for adjectives when we're using participle adjectives words that look like verbs but describe a person or a situation. So I can say bored, I am bored, that describes me and how I feel bored, okay, that's the adjective. Or I can say this thing is boring, boring, that's an adjective too. So it depends on what you're describing that will determine whether you'll use the ed or the ing. Usually we use ed when we want to describe a person or something that is receiving the effect of something. Like, that movie's boring, I am bored. But we use ing when we want to describe something that is causing that feeling. The movie, the lecture, the video, boring. It is boring and I am bored, I feel bored as a result because it is boring. It is causing something to be boring. All right. The last list is adverbs. It's a long one. Just one. L-Y. Like I said earlier, considerably, beautifully, confidently, lovely. Nope, lovely is not an adverb. It ends with L-Y, but it's actually an adjective. It depends on what it's describing. And here you have it. I've circled the most common suffixes shun for nouns and ing for nouns when we're using them as gerunds. If I, I's, eight, and these are all common suffixes for verbs. Us, I've, int, and all for adjectives, really common, and of course, ly for adverbs. If I were you, I would work on writing sentences with these suffixes. So let's test it out. Where does this one go? Prediction, prediction. What is that? A noun, verb, adjective, or adverb? It has a shun at the end, so it's a noun. 
Now, does that noun form have an adjective, adverb, or verb form? Predict. Predict. It does have a verb. How about an adjective form? Well, let's think about all the different adjective word endings. Predictless, predictious, predictable, predictable. Able to be predicted. And what about an adverb? Well, all we have to do to make an adverb is add an ly to the adjective form usually. So, predictably. So a tip on how to increase your vocabulary and get better at writing sentences and speaking sentences that use the correct word form is just practice on your own. Pick one of these words and make a sentence with it in the noun form. So prediction. Okay, I'm going to make a prediction about tomorrow. So here it goes. I wrote a sentence with a noun. I will make a prediction about tomorrow. Now I'm gonna use that same idea I'll make a prediction to, about tomorrow. Same idea, but I'm gonna use the verb instead of the noun. In order to do this, sometimes you have to change the words in the sentence and reorganize things and add things, take things away, but the important thing is you wanna keep the meaning of the original sentence so you can, so you can practice. I will predict something for tomorrow. Now I've used it as a verb, but it's the same idea. Let's try it with an adjective. The meaning changes a little bit, but tomorrow will be predictable. Now I've used it as an adjective. Now let's try it as an adverb. I planned predictably for tomorrow. Now I've used it as an adverb. Now warning, if you aren't sure how to use nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs inside of sentences, that's okay, you can just review that. It takes learning some grammar to do that, which is why you know, all these books and videos exist. Um, but you could also just learn a little bit more about parts of speech and learn about where those go. That's that for this video. I hope it was helpful and good luck with avoiding those word form errors. Even if you make them, people will most likely still understand you. But to be honest, out of all of the types of errors that students make, some make it much harder uh, than others to understand and comprehend what is being said. And this one's a little high, so I do think that it is a priority for students who are looking to write in academic settings. Bye.